Hello. Joining us on the Worshipful Company Distillers YouTube channel today is the master-elect, Jonathan Driver. Welcome. First, can you tell us what is your present role outside the livery and what does that entail? Clive, great to be here. Um, I'm the managing director of a division of William Grant Sons, the independent family um, um, whiskey and spirits company. Um, Stanfast is, is their private client business, and so we are, we are very covert. Um, you won't hear much about us. The, the first rule of Stanfast is don't talk about Stanfast. So we are a very private, client-centric business um, looking after bottle and cast sales directly to, to our clients around the world. That sounds fascinating. But for our viewers today, let's take you back to where it all began. Where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, um, I was nearly born on the west stand of Cardiff Arms Park. My mother was nine and a half months pregnant, a Wales Barbarians game. She went into labour and were it not for Cardiff Royal Infirmary being round the corner, I would have been born on the west stand. So I was born in Wales, but I grew up on the, on the, literally on the coast of North Somerset, looking out over the Bristol Channel. That's, that's how I spent my, all my years until 18. So leaving school and becoming a, a Japanese expert and a historian, did you have a plan? I love the idea of having a plan. I think at 18, I had no plan. I had no plans to go to university. I had no plans. I didn't really know what I was about. And, and I took myself off for, 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 for quite a long time in the late 70s, early 80s into America first and went across from the East Coast to the West Coast by Greyhound bus for, um, for six, seven months. And that was in a world without mobile phones. That was a very interesting, I think probably I learned more about life doing that than I had during my entire time at school. Um, I then ended up in Canada, lived in Canada for a while in Vancouver, um, then came across Japan and, and that became a huge part of my life because um, I had already studied Japanese history at school, I sort of done projects on that, and it was a long way away, I didn't know very much about it, in those days you didn't. Um, living there, travelling there, as a, as a sort of hitchhiker, student and teacher, I was teaching English, just fell in love with the place, just fell in love with Japan, the people, um, food, culture, history, everything. So I guess you came then through luxury goods and into spirits itself. Tell us how that happened. The creation of the luxury, luxury sector in whiskey has been an overnight 30-year story in terms of we've been starting doing this 30 years ago. And I joined, in fact, I was brought in 32 years ago to United Distillers, part of Diageo PLC, as part of a luxury capability intake, they call it then. Um, I was working for Map and Web and Garrard. I come back from Japan. Um, I was really quite a lowly marketing assistant then, um, but loved retail. Map and Web, Royal Silversmiths, um, the Crown Jewelers too, fabulous and really fabulous working environment in Regent Street. But I, I, I felt there was something else there, and, and I got brought into United Distillers. I didn't even know what United Distillers was. Um, and I thought I was working with Guinness, Guinness PLC. I, I went for a job in brewing and ended up in whiskey and stayed for 32 years. Um, so that's how I came in. I came in as a luxury specialist working on things like Johnny Walker Blue Label. Then how did you get to know about the livery and indeed then join? What was the first event you remember you actually attended? Uh, three great friends, three enormous characters within the drinks industry brought me in. Um, in those days, back in the, in the mid-90s, delivery was not an automatic choice for anyone of my age then. Um, and Dr. Alan Rutherford, dear friend, um, who is then working with United Distillers, but uh, also works with me now as, uh, in, in Compass Box, um, a small whiskey company he's chairman of. Ian Brown, formerly of McKinley's Whiskey and White Mackay, lovely, lovely man, certainly not with us anymore. And James McDonald Buchanan, the rogue of the Buchanan family, I have to by my saying that, I mean, he took me to the turf club to interview me to see if I could actually pass muster for the, um, for the livery, and he was wonderful. And those, those three brought me in, took me to my first event, which was possibly one of the most terrifying events I've ever been to. Um, I reduced the average age of that lunch simply by attending probably in the region of 20 years. So it was a very different livery then. And then which year did you actually join the court? Um, and, and what paths have you trod in the, in the livery management prior to becoming the, the upper warden? Um, I came in in 2010, just before, on the eve of my 49th birthday, we had the February lunch that happens then, um, came and joined the court. Um, I've gone through steward, assistant, renter warden, middle warden, now upper warden, 
worked on various committees. I chaired the industry committee for a long time, um, which is great in terms of, of how we were mandated to, to change the makeup of the, the membership of the livery. Um, and so uh, that's been my progression here to this point where um, on the eve of battle, as they say. Now, perhaps lastly, you could tell us how do you view this year ahead as master? Um, the year ahead. There's a thought. A year ago, um, if you'd asked me that question, my answer would be completely different from now in terms of you know, what we look forward to. Um, the, the, the change, the ch ever-changing environment. Um, we must become more adaptive. We must become swifter. We must become more flexible. The delivery will change. There's no doubt in my mind that delivery will must change to address all of this. But the glass is half full. You know, we have extraordinary assets, and so let's leverage the assets, the people that we have, the experience that we have, the knowledge that we have, the passion that we have, and, and in, some, in some instances, just the most extraordinary desire to do great things for good. I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing asset base to deploy during the course of the next year. I know everyone wishes you extremely well in your year ahead. Slange. Slange. <laughs>